This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. On the Torah and on the Holy Land of Israel and on eternal life, it says that they are being bought by suffering, by surim. Now, Yisurim, suffering, that you make other people suffer, will bring you to heaven. Only what that says in the verse, Kifum Tzara Agra, based on the effort, how much you will sacrifice, that's how much you will be rewarded. This is the kind of suffering that are buying for the person a share in the world to come and bringing it, him to live eternal life in this world and in the world to come, to inherit the Holy Land and to have some wisdom and understanding about the Torah. You can see thousands of people that all day long they will claim to learn Torah. Every day they will have schedules with open books, they will sit in yeshivot, they will practice, they will learn, they will claim to be observant, to be frum, to be orthodox, to be yireim. They're going to call themselves and going to title themselves in every name that they will imagine. But the question is not how you call yourself, the question is how they're calling you in heaven. What's your real name in heaven? How really they appreciate your effort in heaven? When Moses went up to Mount Sinai to deliver the holy tablets, so he said that he will come back in 40 days. After 40 days, he was late. He was late in six hours. One minute after the 40 days finished, People already knew for sure that he died. To everyone it was obvious that he failed in his mission. You know why? Because they hoped he will already before. They were counting the days not to Matan Torah, not to receive the Torah. They were desiring the failure of Moshe. After one hour it was already clear in 100% he died, that's it, he failed, we knew it. Because people even though that they claimed to have faith, they were just liars. It's very easy to claim to be a believer and to say I am religious and to say I am observant and to pretend to be something that you're not. But only in the real tests of life, only in reality, when reality is facing you in front of your lackings, in front of your weaknesses, in front of all of your problems, the way that you will deal with your lackings will be the clear evidence if you are a real believer or that you're an actor that you just pretend to be something that you're not. <clears throat> What's the test? The test The test is if a person is able to do tshuva. And what does it mean to do tshuva? It's written, Am Yisrael enam nig'alim ela bi tshuva. Cannot be redeemed without doing tshuva. And when they're doing tshuva, when they're coming back to Hashem, Immediately they are being redeemed. 
means that all redemption depends in tshuva. Now what it means, tshuva? Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that the main part of the tshuva is vishma bizyono vidom vishtok that he will listen to the shames, to the insultings, will close his mouth and will shut up. First of all, gonna listen, gonna hear, gonna accept, gonna learn the lesson and then won't answer and also in his heart he won't have no grudge, no bitterness. He won't hate that person that is rebuking him. He will sit quiet and then what will happen? The fact that he was quiet like we said, Yidom, that's the Hebrew word to be quiet, Yidom. From the word Yidom, be quiet, all of his dam, all of his blood is being cleaned. Because when the Creator is rebuking you and using people to bring you to do tshuva, to face you in front of your lackings, in front of your weaknesses, it's only because that the Creator still has hope from you. That He have not give up on you to take responsibility on your crimes and on your sins and on your weaknesses. That you will take responsibility and work on yourself to improve. But when we reject that opportunity, we're showing that we don't want to come back. We're showing to Hashem that we reject His rebuke. And by that we're rejecting His love. Because at Asher Yohav Hashem Yochiach, the Creator rebukes only the one that He loves. And even though that, that rebuke can be very painful, a person can feel so lost between all of his weaknesses and all of his defaults, and all of his crimes, and bad memories of his failures. If you don't want to fix, so what are you doing here? Why are you claiming to fix if you're not trying to fix? If you're not willing with all your heart really to improve, really to work on yourself and to fix yourself, so why are you pretending? By pretending to be something that you're not, you're destroying and sabotaging and humiliating and shaming the name of Hashem, the name of heaven. If a person is far from tshuva, if a person is not standing with a happy heart to hear the rebuke, with a wishing soul to fix himself, to take responsibility on his lackings and to work and to improve. So why to fake? Why to fake reality that you not belong to? Go and have fun. Go and be an evil person, Rasha, or just be a bum. Just like go live your life somewhere. Have fun. If you don't want to fix, so why to put a kippah? Why to cover your head? Why to keep Shabbat? Why to pretend to be righteous? Why to claim to heaven on daily basis, three times a day, and to do it by the duyot, and prayers on it, I want to be pure, I want to be righteous. When that opportunity comes to your plate, you're rejecting it with two hands. <coughs> to be religious <coughs> with the purpose to complain on heaven, that from heaven they're not assisting, that they're not doing their job, that the Creator is not fulfilling our prayers, not answering to our requests. That's not a real righteous person. That's not the purpose of a believer. A believer is taking responsibility on all of his lackings, on all of his failures, and he's trying to work on himself and to improve. And if he sees that he's failing, he's immediately jumping on it like he found the treasure of his life. Another thing to fix, it's a blessing. That's the only blessing. The blessing is not to be rewarded when you're still in this world. The reward is waiting for the person to the world to come. 
In this world, there is no place for the reward. The reward is not a physical reward. It's not hundreds of fruits or millions of diamonds. That's not the reward in the world to come. The reward of a believer in the world to come is closeness to the Creator. Kirvat Elokim Litov, to be close to the Creator, that's the good. Now what does it mean? What does it mean to be close to the Creator? The Creator said, Karov Hashem lechol korav lechol asher ikre'u ve'emet. The Creator is close to those ones that will call Him with truth. When you're not truthful, Dover shkarim lo ikon leneged enav. A person that is lying cannot stand in front of Hashem. If you're a liar, kat shakarim eina yechola lekabel pene shechina. Group of liars cannot accept the face of Shekhinah, will not be redeemed as long as you're lying to yourself, lying to your beloved ones. As long as you're a liar, the Creator cannot stand with you in the same side. You're not together. Because you're lying. Because you're a liar. And Hashem Elokechem Emet. And your God is the God of truth. Now if you want Him, you need to attach yourself to the truth. That's the only way. A liar that is putting tefillin every day will not inherit eternal life in the world to come. A liar that is eating kosher food will not inherit eternal life with the, on the side of the Creator. A liar cannot be with the Creator even if he is writing tefillin. Even if he is the, 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 the kosher slaughterer, the traditional one, it's, it's a liar. It will always stay a liar. Take a chicken. It's a kosher animal. Put it in the mud, put it in the sewer, put it in the filth, throw every filthy thing on it, it will stay kosher. Because the nature of the chicken is that it's kosher. Take a frog, put it in the mikveh, put it in the river dinur, whatever you're going to do with it, it's a frog. It's a frog. You cannot purify it even if you're going to put it under the Niagara Falls for thousands of years. It will stay a frog. When you're a liar, means that you're lying all the time to yourself, to your friends, to your surroundings, to your boss, to yourself, to Hashem, to heaven. And even if your lies are so amazing, like, oh, I want to be righteous, I want to be pure, I want to learn Torah, please heaven. You're a phony, you're a liar. You are not with the Creator. But if you're an honest person, and your truth is to say, I'm lazy, like I'm filthy, I'm so scared, I don't know what to do. I don't feel like learning, my mind is all over the place, I'm distracted, full with lusts and desires, fears, anxieties, I can't function, I don't want to function, I don't want to see people, can't stand that community, don't want to go to shul. Say the truth. You are with Hashem. Outside from the synagogue, not putting filin, not keeping Shabbat, eating treif, whatever, you are with Hashem. You are with Hashem when you're an honest person. And when you are a liar, you are an outsider. You're like the devil. You're a liar. You're not with God. You're not with heaven. Heaven is the truth. The Creator is the truth. Now when life rebukes you on your sins, on your crimes, on your weaknesses, on your lackings, on your laziness, on your fears, on the fact that you're not taking responsibility and you're not improving to reject it, it's to lie. It's to lie. And that's why you cannot be redeemed. And I'm talking only to myself and I hope you're enjoying it. But me, I'm doing tshuva in front of you right now. I'm talking only to myself. Only to myself. I'm working on myself to improve and to take responsibility on my mistakes. And that's my path in my life. 
And no matter what I'm going to lose on the way, I don't care because I want one thing. I want to be truthful. I want to be honest. And I'm not. So I'm working on it. And I'm not going to stop working on it because there's nothing else to do. There is nothing more important than that. Not shopping and not learning and not davening and not being with that Cebu. It's nothing. Because if you're a liar in the middle of the Cebu, all the public's prayer will be answered and yours won't. Because the Creator cannot stand your lies. Because when you're saying the truth, you're bringing heaven to the picture. Why? Because really heaven is the truth. Because there is a Creator. So when you say the truth, you are bringing the truth to the front line. No matter which truth you say, that book is blue. It's the truth. I said something right. I brought the Creator to the front line. I said something real. Now if I'm going to say that book is pink, now... What does it matter? It doesn't change the importance of the Torah that I'm going to say, no, it's big. No, you have different books of Torah, Chumash, that, that their cover is pink. It, it's not downgrading that book. But because that I lied, I separated myself from the truth. And by that, separated myself from the Creator that created and decided to paint that book in blue and not in pink. Why? Because that's how his wisdom decreed on that book to be blue. Why? I don't know. But it's the truth that it's blue. So if I'm going to twist it, I'm twisting God's creation. No matter from which reason I'm doing it. As long as you're lying, you are bending and twisting and bringing darkness to the world. Even if it's because you're scared. Even if you're lying because you're scared... The Torah is telling us, Lota guru mipne ish. You're not allowed to be scared of no one. As long as you're afraid, it means that you are a liar. You know why? Because the verse is saying, pachadu chataim betzion. The fear came to people because they lied, because they sinned. When you're scared of police, of financials, of money, of your wife, of your boss, of whatever, sicknesses, illnesses, plagues, I don't know what. It's because that the Creator took away His face from you. And why the Creator takes His face from you? Because you're a liar. Because you keep on lying and faking. And you keep on pretending to be something you're not. When you wear a kippah on your head, when you wear a tzitzit, when you cover your sleeves, when you claim to be, I am this, I am that, and you go proudly and showing off, what are you showing off? Show off the truth. Show the truth. Say the truth. Say I'm a broken vessel with a strong desire, and I hope to do good, and I'm, I'm not able, and I'm trying. Don't pretend, no, me every morning, 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m. Stop with those lies. Be honest and the words of truth will illuminate the path of your life and only good things will take place in your life. And it won't be easy because it's hard to get out of those bad habits from all those patterns that we attach to ourselves. That for years we were lying and for years we were pretending because we were scared to be alone, because we were scared to fail, because we were scared to confront our fears, because we were scared from our parents, because we were afraid from people's opinions and criticism. Million and one reasons to be scared of. The fact that you keep on calling those fears to control your life separates you from heaven, separates you from the happiness and joy and satisfaction of your life. You know why? Because you hate yourself on every moment that you are not truthful, that you're not yourself. Because not only that Hashem is not with you, you are disconnected from your soul when you're lying. Because when you're not honest, you are not. You are not yourself. Because like we said, if I'm going to claim that book is pink and it's blue, I'm just going to twist reality. When you say, I love you, when you don't, or when you don't say, I love you, when you do, you're twisting reality. And by that, 
sabotaging yourself, destroying the truth of your reality, bending and twisting the nature of creation. If you don't love someone, tell him I don't love you. If you love him, tell him I love you. Say the truth. If you're afraid of something, deal with your fears. Don't run away from them because they're going to chase. And if you have the power to help, so go and help. And if you're lazy, so say, I don't want to. And don't be a liar. And don't hide from yourself. Because when you're lying, you're cutting the lines, the threads of your soul. You're separating yourself from your source of life. And it's a crime that a person cannot fix without tshuva. And this is why tshuva is the highest level of them all. And this is why that in the place of those people that completed their tshuva, even complete righteous people cannot stand. Why? Because to admit in your failures and to say the truth and to apologize and to say I was wrong is such a high level. It's such an amazing greatness of a person. You should be so noble to be able to apologize and to admit that you failed, that you disappointed your beloved ones, that you didn't care about them, that you were self-centered, that you cared about yourself. It's so humiliating to be wrong that if you choose to go in that path, it's showing your greatness. It's showing really what you're made of. That you're not made of the stink that you're wearing, that you're made of the holy essence of your soul that is covered with filth. And you're showing it only by being truthful and admitting and being able to apologize and to do tshuva. And this is why the Creator have not brought salvation and redemption yet. Because we're trying with all of our power to find ways out of tshuva. Trying to learn and trying to pray and trying to fly to Uman to Rabbi Nachman of Breslev and trying to go on different kivret tzaddikim and trying to redeem ourselves with money and trying to make a frashat chala with groups of women and to cover our fingernails and to be so modest and like we're gonna do whatever it takes not to do tshuva. Not to stand in front of the mirror and to say, it's disgusting, I was disgusting, it was horrible. We're going to do everything not to stand in that position. When that is the truth. And it's the truth that must be said. If it won't be said, if it won't be said, we're bending and twisting reality. And what will be the benefit of that? What you're going to earn? What you're going to gain? What you're going to gain? Separation from the Creator. Separation from blessing for good forever. Being under the shadows of your life, trapped under your fears, keep on having to be like a liar and always to keep on pulling that lie and to pretend again and to make another story and to avoid and to hide and to be scared and to be chased by your own fears. Why? Only because you haven't stopped. And look how one sin is dragging another in a way that is scary. If now you lied, and someone asked you, did you lie? If you will say yes, that's where it ends. If you will say no, it will never finish. It will never finish because he will rebuke you. He will ask you. Reality will chase you again and again. And you now must be the most perfect liar in the world only because of one time that you were too scared to admit, yes, I lied. If you will choose to stand, and to say, yes, I lied, yes, I failed, yes, I disappointed you, yes, I was selfish, yes, I was wrong, it will finish. Maybe they will tell you, you hurt me. It's the truth. You hurt them. Take responsibility. Maybe they will say, I'm disappointed of you. But in the same time, they will also be proud of you, of being able to say the truth. You will already start enjoying the reward of being truthful. Even in that low place of shame. But if you're going to choose to lie, they're going to ask you, but you're lying. You have to say again, no, I'm not. 
You are. No, I'm not. And you're going to keep on lying. And everyone is a new lie. It's a new sin that is carrying new sins after it. And it's a never-ending story. Because in five years it will come back to you. And if it's not going to come back from the same person, so your children will bring it back to the table. And then what you're going to do? You cannot run away. Because Sheker Tzaf Al Pnei lie is floating above the water. The Creator cannot stand lies and He won't let it finish. It won't let it end. The Creator won't let it finish. And if you think that you were strong enough to hide it in this lifetime, you know what's going to happen in the world to come? That its name is the world of truth, Olama Emet. Sof Davar, in the end of things, Hakol Nishma, every single thing will be heard. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about the most scariest moment of a liar. Everything will be heard. All your thoughts, all your plans, all your scams, all your feelings, everything will be heard on speakers, in front of all those people that you hid the truth from them. It will be heard out loud. Panic. It's time to get panic. <laughs> now it's time for that panic attack. And then that panic attack will bring you to understand the greatness of this world. That in this world, you can still fix. But in the world to come, there is nothing to do. Over there, it's not the world of grace. It's the world of judgment. Over there, when you reach that moment, and that's it, now we are counting. Everything is on the scale. The merits and the debts. The privilege and the mitzvot and the wonderful things that you did and the crimes and the sins and the lies. Everything is on the table and the table is wide and open and you cannot do tshuva. Over there, there is no place for tshuva. No one can do tshuva in heaven. <coughs> heaven is above time. There is no time to do tshuva. You cannot. That's it. It's a psak. It's a decision. It's a decree. Okay, now... Show us what you brought. Counting. You cannot fix over there. Means that's the most silliest thing in the world to decide to hide something forever. Because you're just bringing yourself to that point that from that point you cannot go back. It will hit you in the maximum power straight to your face. In front of your beloved ones into their hearts <coughs> to be disappointed from you in public, in heaven, in front of the Creator. The only way to fix it is right now. Is right now in this world as long as you're alive. Thank you. And when you do tshuva, immediately you are being redeemed. First of all, from your fears. Second, maybe more important, from keep on hurting your beloved ones. To do tshuva, it's to come back to Hashem. To come back to Hashem, it's to come back to the truth. Now, to go in that path of tshuva, no one can guide you. No one. I can guide you and give you an advice to teach you and to explain you how to do tshuva. Okay, how you do tshuva. You should, first of all, recognize your mistake. You should admit, accept it. And then you need to apologize to that one that you hurt. If it's heaven, let's say you haven't kept Shabbat and you feel wrong about it, you need to do tshuva to heaven. Hashem, sorry, I didn't keep Shabbat. People around you, they're not being hurt if you're not keeping Shabbat. Heaven, it's mitzvot between you to heaven. But if you hurt your friend, 
You cannot go to heaven and say, Oh, listen, I lied to my friend. <laughs> it's not helping. You need to go and face him and tell him, I'm sorry. You need to go and to fix it with him because until he will forgive you, the Creator cannot forgive you. Even Yom Kippur cannot erase sins between people. If you hurt your friend, if you insulted your friend and you haven't fixed it with him, you haven't done every single thing that is needed until he will forgive you, all that day doesn't help in your case. Nothing can do. Nothing can help you. Because still there are judgments above your head. Why? Because you haven't fixed it. You haven't done tshuva. To do tshuva in front of a person, it's to apologize to him until he will see in your eyes that you fixed. That you regret. That's tshuva. Now, that's the advice. Okay, go do tshuva. Apologize, fix as much as you can, try to work on yourself as much as you can, but no one can guide you on what to do tshuva because only you know exactly where you failed. That's why no one can help you in that p path except of you take your life re 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 seriously and decide to start cleaning yourself. Decide to take yourself every day seriously and every place that you recognize that you have a default, that you have a defect, that you have a problem, that you have a dark spot in that place, take responsibility on that and work on it and work to fix it. Even if you need to make a root canal and you need to go to the depths of that problem and even if it's going to take years, so thank God for a long life that you have, that you've been blessed to work. Because if you're not going to work on those things, they will come back to you. There is no way out. There is no way out. That's our life. You don't like it. Go to Venice Beach. <laughs> what are you doing here? Go to Venice Beach. If you're claiming to be religious, if you claim to have some connection to the Creator, so I'm asking you, based on what? Like, in, in how it's being expressed in your life? That you love learning His wisdom? If you're not keeping what that's written in the book, so what are we talking about? If we're not really connecting ourselves to His divine will, like, okay, I'm the son of my father. Why? Because like he brought me down to the world. Okay, but in, in which way you represent your, your connection to him? Like in which way you show your love to him, your dedication? The path of tshuva is the path to the truth. When a person is seeking for the truth, he must go in those gates of tshuva. Without doing tshuva, a person cannot be redeemed, cannot feel, cannot sense. Holiness cannot feel heaven, cannot understand the divine will of heaven. There are so many verses, there are so many obligations, there are so many commandments, there are so many people that interpret those verses and tells us what Hashem wants and what... But you are still alone in this world. You came alone to this world and you're going to live this world alone. And in that time that you're here, you must try to understand what really heaven expects from you. If from heaven they put certain people in your path and those people are real people with souls, with feelings, with emotions, with needs, with real needs, they are real people. To ignore those people is a crime. Not to pay attention to their feeling, it's a crime. It's a violation of your mission. Not to be aware to the reality that is surrounding you is to be disconnected from the truth because it's really your reality that those are the people that are around you. When we want to reach heaven, when we want to be in touch with Hashem, numeral values and first letters and, 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 and combinations of, of, of verses and, and skipping letters in 72 numbers from one verse to the next won't bring you nowhere. I'm sorry. 
with all due respect to all the Kabbalistics, to all the Mekubalim, to all the Mekupalim, to everyone. It's not going to bring you nowhere. I'm sorry. As long as you're a liar, as, you're, as long as you're not righteous, me, as long as I am not righteous, as, not, as long as I am not pure, I can pretend to be whatever I want. It won't help you. It won't bring me there. It won't bring you there. You're not making it. You just keep on keep on swimming in, in, in your in, in in your swamps of of, of 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 illusions. In your imaginations. Oh yeah I am, oh yeah, I'm making it, oh yeah, today I did this, I did that. Yeah, you keep on selling stories to like to the ones who wants to buy it, but Hashem, the God of truth, is not buying lies. People with feelings, people with heart, people, they're not buying lies. They won't buy your lies. They won't stand by your side as long as you're a liar. You're not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. If I'm not going to do tshuva seriously, cannot make it. Hashem is the God of truth. You want to serve Him? You must be a truthful person. Must, 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 must be truthful. Must not ignore the truth even when it hurts. Even when it's painful, like something you never experienced in, experienced in your life, ever. Your worst fear. If it's reality, it's reality. You need to deal with it. If from heaven they pointed you on a certain mission, they put you in a certain place, except of working on it to fix it, there is nothing else to do. When you're not tried to run away from his mission, you wouldn't want to experience what that he experienced. He'd been thrown into the sea in the time of storm, and a whale came and swallowed him. And for three days he'd been digested in the guts of that whale. And then he'd been puked to the sea, to the shore. And then bald with no eyebrows, he had to drag himself to complete his mission. And then the Creator rebuked him in the end. After fulfilling his destiny and doing his job, the Creator told him, listen, you just didn't care about my creation. That's why you were caring about yourself. You thought about yourself that you don't want to give that prophecy because if you're going to give that prophecy to them and in the end I'm going to forgive them, so you will be humiliated as a prophet that your prophecy didn't took place and everyone will call you a liar. So you rather that thousands of people that lived in that city will die, that you will not be humiliated. Great. Great. Yonah ben Amitai. You know who he was? Ben Amitai? The son of Elijah the prophet. Couldn't deal the truth. Why? Because he didn't want to be ashamed. He didn't want to be insulted. He didn't want to go through the shames that life brought to his face. And because that he didn't want to face the truth, so he had to go through some sufferings, and in the end of those sufferings, he faced the truth and he went and did his job and been humiliated on not doing it in the first place, on not taking it on himself, been rebuked on the fact that his sorrow was more important to him than the sorrow of, of all those thousands of people that lived in that city. Not only people, also animals that haven't done anything to no one. But he didn't care about them because he cared about himself and he cared about himself so badly that he had to see it. Because the truth is something that will hit the face of everyone in this creation. Even if you today pretend to be the chief rabbi of I don't know which community and you have thousands of students, the truth will hit you in the face. And it will be like semi-trailer with 50,000 wagons on its back. 
If you lied 50,000 lies to 50,000 people or only to your wife, it's going to hit you today or tomorrow. The truth is coming. The truth is reality. You can run, but you can't hide. You can reject it for tomorrow, but tomorrow is coming. The world to come. The lucky ones will be those ones that will take that message and will go to work. Will go to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work on myself. It's the only thing I have to do. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to work on myself and I'm going to pay and I'm going to work and I'm going to sweat and I'm going to do what it takes because I don't want to lie. Because I know that a liar cannot stand in front of Hashem. You understand? Good. Thank you. So Moses, he was late in six hours. I was late only in one hour and a half. So Bo Hashem. I'm sorry. I hope it's not too late now to say sorry. Thank you. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.